So we left a lot of things in 2021, hopefully. Um, we left, hopefully we left uh, Donald Trump in 2021. Uh, well, well, wish. Well, I mean, maybe God. towards towards the, the beginning there, but okay. Yeah, well, yeah, it was a little rough at first, but, you know, he's like not selling out in Florida. So yeah. and he's not tweeting about uh, people with Diet Coke addictions anymore. So also true, um, which Pete had a Diet Coke addiction, I think. Yes, he uh, did. So there you go. Big, big Donald Trump fan. Pete <laughs> oh, <God>. oh, no. <laughs> Can't defend himself. <laughs> By Diet Coke Association now. Uh <laughs> Hopefully we left bad comic book movies in 2021, although Morbius is coming out shortly. I was just about to say that. Uh, mm, that was a little presumptuous. Yeah, you're right. It was. <laughs> uh, it's like I'm an oracle or something. Like I can see the future. I see Morbius getting like a six or a five. That's what I see. Um, we actually left RPs in 2021. We left Love us Pete. Something. And Phil from Philly in 2021. But we actually added something uh, in 2022. You know, new year, new us, new comics, pals. Something is different about us. And I'm wondering what it is. It's a bit uncanny. Is it that you didn't introduce the show correctly? Uh, well, yeah, we're like leaving the intro, the intro to the show in 2020. <laughs> Is that what we're doing? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I just no. I just wanted to make sure. It started with so. I'm like, oh, so I guess we're starting. Okay. Let's yeah. That's right. That's I'm ready. I'm ready. The very first time that has ever happened. That's right. What we, that's, a, that's a Kale Ward ass introduction. Is what that was. <laughs> what we have added in 2022. Uh, the first new. Th- well, the, I guess it'd be the second new thing, depending on how you're engaging with the show. Because if you're watching, then you already know. And he's talked. Tyler Olson has joined the comic spells. Hello. We left our peas and gained some teas. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you guys will know Tyler from formerly of the long box. Uh, Tyler has joined this show as a guest several times. Yeah, the host I forced myself to do a Howard the Duck episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the host of Journey into Quistery. Uh, the a, re- a very regular co-host on the Wednesday reviews. Uh, Tyler is an official member. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Hola. I was going to speak more Spanish, uh, but uh, I don't know any more than that. <laughs> That's yeah, right. So, so you, you dropped the two white guys and got the whitest uh, Latino. You can. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait. Yeah, that makes me a minority on this podcast. That's, That's right. right. Yes, mm-hmm. you're outnumbered now. How does it feel? Don't say the C word, guys. Come on. What's that? Uh, a, cr- a cracker. Oh, we can't say whoa, on Twitch. Whoa. But, hey, oh come God. on. <laughs> Jesus. Wow, Tyler. We're leaving right. racism in 2021. God. But good. You know what? I, I like that. I like yeah. that. Fuck. that. So one of my uh, late Christmas gifts to myself yeah. is you joining the show. So thank you for that. I'm um, a gift. Yes, absolutely. You are a precious gift. And I will feel very differently at the end of the year, so yep. exactly. enjoy it. Yep. Yep. When I when I just make you uh, laugh, be, and then you just just derail the show, which you've experienced multiple times. Already. That has happened. That's why you're here to to make yep. me laugh. Uh, thank I'm you the for jester of the show. Then <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Must make the king laugh, or else I get killed. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank you for joining us on episode 271 of the Comics Pals. We are so happy to have you. We are starting off the new year fresh, as you can tell. Uh, Lots of new things on the horizon. So many that I can't even talk about it right now. Um, But a lot of cool things that you can expect. Not just Tyler joining the show. We're going to be doing a lot of things differently. Uh, So hopefully you enjoy the ride. Stay tuned for a lot of updates uh, over the coming weeks about what we're going to be doing. Um, I'm really excited for this year. Uh, it's going to be phenomenal, I think. Um, and of course, Marco and Kale are still here. How are you guys doing in 2022? Um, I got a firmware update. Uh, feeling good. You know, hardware <laughs> hardware is coming in uh, soon. Oh, but uh, no, it's in the it's still in the alpha actually. Oh boy, guys, that's not good. <laughs> Marco is beta. Are you kidding? <laughs> I uh I went to bed at about nine thirty 
and um, woke up with a hangover. Didn't drink. <laughs> mm. Didn't drink. What? Um, <laughs> that my water back hurts. Hangover? All right. That, um, that UK cold. <laughs> and uh, my dog panicked all night. So uh, feeling oh. spry as ever. The fireworks, wasn't it? Oh, man, it was bad. It was like yeah. it was yeah. like Fallujah. <laughs> oh God, fucking, fucking fireworks just two houses down what I, were literally they, what were they celebrating in Fallujah that they had fireworks couldn't tell you i wasn't there okay <laughs> no, all right fireworks. uh <laughs> moving on from that um i had an interesting night that i can't talk about all, all right. i can say is that i'm happy to be here and I Happy am about a lot of other things. Too. You're yeah. absolutely I'm you're, right. I'm glad you're like awake and alive. You had your you're like your little one up, and uh, you're good to go now. So, mm. <laughs> yep. If you people on YouTube might catch his <laughs> eyes kind of drifting to his uh, his Christmas tree, that is on uh, that is uh, you know part of it. But we're just gonna truck on, just soldier on. We sure are, uh, because we have a lot of comic book stuff to talk about. If you can imagine that, this is a show about comics. We're going to be talking about the new Batman trailer that came out. I very much hope it's the last, by the way. No more. I don't want to see any more. Um, Spider-Man No Way Home is still breaking all kinds of records. And we're going to talk about one that uh, is near and dear to me. Um, we're also going to talk about what's next for Spider-Man. This is we are in a post no spoilers for Spider-Man world. That's it. This is it. New year. If you, if you haven't seen it yet by now, this podcast might not be safe for you because at any time we could pop in with a spoiler. So, you know, got to let it slip. Let it slip. Let it... Uh, Guys, Alfred Molina is in this movie. Did you know that? <laughs> what? Marissa Tomei's in the movie. <laughs> And she they're is. together. And they fuck. <laughs> it's f- wild. Guys, I don't think I watch the same thing as you. <laughs> yeah, have you guys seen the have you guys seen the meme of uh there there were movies with um Alfred Molina and Marissa Tomei where they were a couple, but there's also one with Alfred Molina and Sally Field, who if you remember was Aunt May in the amazing Spider-Man films. Yeah. So really Doc Ock was just there to uh I round up his bitches, I guess. I <laughs> what? As Doc Ock is wanting to do. Right. He's known for that. Um, yeah. He's got all those arms. He's got to wrap them up. And uh, in our main topic, we're going to be doing our comics awards for 2021. Better late than never. We're going to close out the year uh, in an official capacity by talking about the comic books that we loved last year, the creators and the stories and all that good stuff. We're going to close out uh, with that. Um, Before we get into all of that, though, I want to let you guys know how you can support the show. Make sure that you are leaving us a follow, a rating, and a review wherever it is that you listen to this very podcast. Uh, On Spotify, you can leave us a rating now. So if you listen over there, leave us the rating you think is appropriate, which, of course, would be five stars. Uh, Five stars for Tyler. Yeah, try to do six if you can. Yeah, cheat. Like, if yeah. you can somehow, like, if you've got a buddy, just say, hey, let me get your phone. And yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I did that with my old podcast all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> the most of the reviews and ratings we have are me doing that uh, you had on people's accounts, iTunes yeah. accounts. Yeah, that's yeah. I not at an true. Apple store at the time. So I would be doing it on all the, the test yeah. demo devices. Yeah, absolutely. For real. I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Johnny Appleseed that. liked your podcast. <laughs> I've done that walking into an Apple store. Right? You can, you can, yeah. YouTube.com slash the comics pals. Make sure you guys are subscribing for free over there. Still trying to get to 500 subscribers to so help us reach that goal. Um, help Sean reach clarity. 500 <laughs> subscribers. That is not going to happen. Um, we will get to 500 subscribers before I have clarity. Uh, we're going to be announcing our book clubs soon. So stay tuned for that. If you're excited about book clubs uh, and our weekly reviews for comics are ongoing uh, this Wednesday. Well, I guess Thursday for you guys, uh, we will be talking about Inferno. So yes. come prepared for that. What else? I don't know. It almost doesn't matter. Because Inferno's coming out. It's the end. You guys, make sure you watch that on YouTube. I will be celebrating the end of Inferno by lighting my house on fire. So I'm going to be on <laughs> my own. Inferno's going to go on. The camera wow. will be great. 
Right. In How... the true spirit of Jonathan Hickman's mm-hmm. X Men opus. Mm-hmm. Burn everything down. Yeah. Everything. Yep. Well, before we uh before we dive into the rest of the show, Tyler, given that you are the newest member of the show and sure. you, sure. of course, are gonna be here for a while, I wanna get your answers to the predictions that we did last week. I got um, perfect. We we got Pete's predictions uh for some reason. Whether we'll use them or not, whether he'll be here or not, who knows? It'd be great if he was. Uh, we got Phil's as well. Time to get yours. So I'm going to pull up the questions. You already have your answers. I so do. we're going to run through that real fast um, and see how wrong you are. <laughs> Probably very. <laughs> Probably very. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. So the first question is, which superhero movie will you enjoy the most in 2022? So I put on put down Thor Love and Thunder. Okay. Huh, okay. Um, Thor Ragnarok is one of my favorite Marvel movies. So mm-hmm. I thought this is kind of a kind of a safe bet. It was between this and uh the new Spider-Verse. Mm. Um, but I want to do a little, something a little different here. And yeah, plus it it has Christian Bale as Gore. So like that's crazy. How do you how do you fuck that up? You can't. I'm jinxing it, but you can't. <laughs> um, do you want to add a second pick just in case? Your movie I'll, doesn't come I'll out. say uh, Morbius. No, I'll say um, I'll say Spider Verse Two. Okay, Spider Verse Two. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, which superhero TV show will you enjoy the most in 2022? It's Moon Knight. It's got to be. Mm. Okay, it's got to be that. That's that's the it's your boy. It's my jam. You know. So I, I I I hope it's Moon Knight. Is probably what I'm trying to say here. It's a safe uh, bet. Yeah, I, mean, I I did think She Hulk for a bit, but then the whole 30 minute kind of procedural thing i was like uh, a little up in the air but. we went through that same process yep. here on the show <laughs> yep. so. in, my, in my head i'm like where is daredevil most likely to appear and I'm like, it was probably she hulk but yep. so yeah uh will marvel announce any information about an x-men the x-men or fantastic four films i don't think so okay no will dc announce a justice league film in 2022 I wrote hell no to that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will DC announce a reboot of their main comics universe? Um, if we're talking like main reboots of the entire universe, I wrote no. No, okay. I think they're they're kind of, it seems to be that they, they like where they're going right now with more kind of career-owned, non-event stuff, mm-hmm. kind of doing its thing. And plus... Um, doesn't seem like they really care about the comics right now. So <laughs> why, why even do that? But will Joker two be announced? Uh, I forgot about this. Question. No. no, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I maintain. I actually really like Joker. Me so, too. Um, but I don't think they will announce huh. it this year. What's it like to be bad people? <laughs> Pretty um, awesome. Feels, feels great. Yeah, yeah, it feels great. I Crime's- like being bad. It feels good. <laughs> <laughs> crime is funny Mostly. Yeah. you just sometimes oh. you just have a bad day you know one bad day yeah just one bad day you become the joker just makes oh, you want to go up ape shit uh will jonathan hickman revisit the x-men outside of the digital first series with declan shalvey in yes. 2022 mm. yes i feel like he will but not in any kind of large capacity i think yeah. i think this this question gives a lot of leeway like I think there could be some kind of uh, what's the word oh, look for the you know, annuals, like an annual or an anthology or a crossover oh. with Spider Man or something. Okay, so or... so that's the only caveat. If it's not, it has to be something directly, specifically, exclusively about the X Men. Can't be like, oh, Hickman's writing Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Here are the X Men popping up. Well, what if it was like marketed as an X Men Spider Man crossover or something? It, it has to be specifically mm. like the X-Men are the, the the only important thing about this story. Unless it's like Hickman writing. I'm, I'm still going to say yes. I'm still okay. going to say yes. Yeah. All right. Cool. That'll work. Uh, will Jonathan Hickman write a Spider-Man story or series with Chris Piccolo in 2022? I mean, for Rich Johnson's sake, I hope yes. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'll, I'll say yes. I, I've seen like uh, uh, Bacala working on stuff, so. I hope so. That idea sounds fun. 
Yeah. Um, they seem to be really wrapping up this uh, Beyond thing that they uh, marketed as the new status quo for Spider-Man pretty quickly. Yeah, what so, the hell? What happened? <laughs> looks like uh, Ben Riley is going to be the Spider-Man of Hollywood coming up. So hmm. I don't know where he's going to swing from. But... Down one bit. <laughs> what what creator will break out in 2022? So I wrote Jed McKay. Oh, huh. that's good. That's um, good. Jed McKay that's doing doing some good work on Moon Knight. Uh, Black Cat, I believe Jed McKay did. Uh, Death of Doctor Strange, I believe is Jed McKay as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's been fun. That's been a good book. Um, I think, that's an uh, event though, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought it was just more of a so that's him broken out. Mm. it's a dr strange event i don't think that counts like, that's so, still an event my man no because so, i i had specific conditions and i lost under those specific conditions yeah but that you chose you chose someone who was already broken out fair enough for, and, and you pigeonhole yourself so that's on you <laughs> right for for jed mckay to break out by the standards of what we're what we do here it's not that high of a bar like he does like that's he probably has the lowest bar of any of our choices that we made last week. So safe yeah. pick. Mm. Um, cool. All right. Well, we'll check back at the end of the year to see how wrong Tyler is, or maybe he here, will so, you know. dethrone me. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, we'll every every year so far. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got to throw you now. I got it. <laughs> I won't. I won't yeah, stand I, for that. I, I also won this year. So. Pete won also last year, but no one has beaten me outright. I've tied. Which is the one that's two points is the breakout? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. Which I um, it's nice to see you come up with uh, questions and then the scoring is a little funny and then adjust for the next time. <laughs> well, I had the thought while I was listening to the 2020 episode of like, damn, this should be worth two points. But we never established that. So this year, though, we will we will we will do that. Uh, let's get into some listener comments. We've got a few, uh, ringing in the new year with some comments from the pals at home. Gosh, normally Pete would do this. Uh, anybody feel like they want to read the comments? Uh, so we got a email from Christian. Oh, there you uh, go. All there, right. I'm just initiative guys. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, I read black mirror and gates of Gotham before reading the first three volumes of new 52 Batman. I liked black mirror. Uh, uh, Gates of Gotham and Court of Owls arc, but the Joker trade wasn't really wowing me like I wish. Does the Snyder run get better or worse past the third trade? Uh, and then Christian also says, uh, and never read a Spider-Man book, but super familiar with most, most of his general history. Would the Bendis Ultimate Omnibus coming out next week be a good starting point? I know people are very hit or miss on his writing. Thanks. It's a, it's a double whammy here. Yeah, um, I responded to this in the email, um, but I will say my thoughts here as well um i think that scott snyder does a really admirable job following up on morrison's run i think morrison's run was extremely difficult to uh jump on after one of those runs where it's like whoever comes on is just not going to do what they did right um but i think snyder did the best job that he could uh i personally love the super heavy arc and i love what comes after that I know that not everybody's a fan of that stuff. To me, that makes or breaks the run. If you don't like the twist for Super Heavy, you will probably come away from Snyder's run saying it was eh. Um, but if you like it, you'll it'll probably be up there for you. For me, it's one of the best runs that I've ever read. So, I, I liked directly after the uh, Joker stuff because it got into... Um the zero year and i yeah. had a lot of fun with that the the riddler yeah, oh um, my was god a really great yeah. like arc um yeah and all that stuff was pretty fun uh kind of gives you a a take from snyder on his earlier on batman's earlier work um that i think it, it works really really well i had a lot of fun yeah i think the i think the worst part of uh snyder's run is that death of the family mm. sort of thing um, and not to say it's bad. I still think it's good, but I think it, it's it's more middling compared to the rest of the arcs of the of his run. Yeah, um, with Capullo, um, I'd say keep keep chugging along. It gets real good. I I also enjoy the super heavy stuff, and then the the status quo change I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, but then uh, the the Mister Bloom stuff is fantastic. 
um there, there's some real real fun stuff in that I, I would i would keep going with it i'm actually collecting the omnibu omnibuy for it um yeah it's, i had it's to good. do that yeah Ooh, they're, they're nice it's good design on them um and then for the second part of your email uh the bendis spider-man uh, ultimate spider-man stuff that's classic i i would say that's a modern classic and it, there's a reason for that um i know i was initiated into comics around the time where that was like it was like in the first hundred issues i think and i picked it up sight unseen and i i, I was floored by how good it was um, as someone who had never really read a comic before. And I went back and bought all the trades and followed it until its end. I don't think there's literally a better place to start with Spider-Man than this, actually. I think especially if you if you know who Spider-Man is, right. I think Bendis's ultimate Spider-Man is such a good um, take on the character, even though things are slightly different uh that it's uh, you it's still it feels like part of the history yeah like you you get everything you need with it and and frankly you feel it more because it's all condensed and and modern yeah i will say and this is nothing against christian but the, the idea of bendis being hit or miss with his writing is wild to me because like back when Where have I was you been reading, the past five years. Sure. No, I agree for like the past five years. I agree. But like Bendis around the time of Ultimate Spider-Man when he's yeah, doing absolutely. Avengers, when he's yeah. doing Daredevil, like at the time, everyone was like, yo, this is the guy. Mm -hmm. um, well, he's I mean, he's like the number three reason Marvel didn't go under, yeah. you know, because yeah. of Ultimate Spider-Man and everything else he was doing. Yep. Yeah, and I, I think we need to start putting respect on Mendes's name in 2022. Like for like whatever it is that you think about what well. what he's done at DC and the later Marvel stuff, Brian Michael Bendis, like a lot of people got in, into comics or got back into comics because of him. And I, I, I think like we gotta stop the disrespect. I think we're all we're also seeing the uh not to make this a Bendis retrospective. He's he, he's still alive, but um like we're, <laughs> we're we see new writers kind of aping him in a way for better or for yeah. worse yeah and yeah. sometimes a lot for Absolutely. worse um but yeah, so it's a lot of times it feels like he's aping himself currently yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there's a, the most recent issue of a uh, crossover actually has bendis in the comic um talking to his powers characters which is a, <laughs> a good a good bit um, that's wild yeah the powers is kate's aping bendis as bendis it's it's fun yeah the, the powers yeah. thing so good yeah. tyler yeah. why don't you read the next one okay um so uh some handsome devil uh <laughs> commented on the episode 270 uh, his name is tyler olson um he said i gotta run a malware scan on my computer after that after that uh, announcement by sean which i believe he was referring to sean having covid <laughs> yeah you know tyler um that's fucked up, man. I had COVID. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that, that guy's real fucked up, whatever. I don't know why he would say that. That's just rude. Yeah. And it's funny because that guy, I think I, he told me that he got exposed at like the same day that he wrote that comment. <laughs> so it's a quick karma. Does he have COVID? <laughs> um, I don't think so. I think, I oh. think he's clear or he just has um, just an apex body and it just is <laughs> not unaffected by it. You know, okay, you know what? I think I, body. <laughs> I think I had a scare right after we did that episode too. You yeah, did. he's not because Sean wasn't wearing Fuck a mask. <laughs> Talking God, right Sean. into that mic. My bad. That that uh, get a, get a pop cover. You Jesus. think we would have we would have gotten used to this by now? You that know? digital like, disease. Uh, you know what? It is what it is. Com, guys, you can use code uh, Comics Pals for seven free. <laughs> That would be beautiful, dude. That'd we should get great. that going. It's a great app. Yeah. Um, all right. Keep it going. All right. So Langston Brown, uh, great name, by the way. That's um, the Comics Pals bought. Uh, oh, he at he yeah, tagged yeah. the Comics Pals. Uh, oh. Bought the first three volumes <laughs> of Black did? Science. Uh, read the first and was shocked at how amazing it was. Haven't had a page turner like this since Invincible. 
thanks had to stop after volume one though until i get four to ten so i can bang it all out in one go wow okay this is a meta drain yeah 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 so uh the context here is that langston wrote in at an earlier point and asked for recommendations for science fiction stories and comics and i replied with several answers one of them was black science Mm -hmm. which i think is one of the most underrated books to come out of the 2010s and i recommended it to them and this is this is what they had to say i want to show you guys really quick if you'll uh, indulge me my christmas gifts i never shared them uh, and they are comics related and related to this topic. Oh, so I'll be back is, in one is second. It, oh, it's those bl- it's those black science hardcovers, aren't oh, they? Oh man. Uh, hold on, I think I might have one too. We no. always have to we always have to indulge Sean. He never lets uh, us indulge. <laughs> Dan, this is my- so for you YouTube people, I'm holding up uh one, the first of uh I don't even know how many black science uh omnibus hardcovers. It's good, oh, Mateo Scalera. Me. Yeah, it's oh, beautiful. Turn that, turn that bad boy. Let's see that spine. Ooh. Oh, he thick. Yeah. Yep. That's not all. Uh, I got also low. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Yep. I feel like that'll be used as a murder weapon one day. They, they seem it might. Yeah. I actually well, not, made that joke to my girlfriend. Not the way things are going oh, boy. at the Bartley household. <laughs> <laughs> you guys having a grand old time over there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, thanks for writing in Langston and uh, uh, Langston. I, I will say, um, if you liked, if you're liking Black Science, check out Remender's uh, run on Fear Agent with uh, Terry Moore, or not uh, Terry? Uh, not Terry. Oh uh, shit. Um, Dotson. I can't remember. Okay, I don't know. Right. I'm right. I'm right. Terry Moore. I haven't yeah. read Fear Agent yet. It's it's again it's pulpier sci-fi, hmm. um, but it's it's kind of like what got him. In, uh, that was like his big first major big book for Dark Horse, I believe. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's good stuff. All right, and uh, this last comment. Uh, so Christine Liu said, "Thanks. Uh, this episode and the other notes in the comments helped me grapple with understanding the last issue. This is I about this is in Korea. To, yeah, in regards to Made in Korea. Yeah." yeah. Nice. Um, I'm really glad that the, the episode that we did uh, work for you, Christine. Obviously, there was, I guess, controversy, um, a little bit of pushback on our review. Understanding. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair to say. Um, but I'm glad that that conversation and the conversation that Pete and I had on the review did something for you. Uh, Made in Korea is a really special book that we enjoyed here on this show a lot um and never was there any intent to disrespect i mean we had um jeremy holt on and great conversation with them so um yeah glad you got something out of that uh let's uh let's jump into the pals pulls um let's start with you tyler since you are the new kid on the block sure you chose sure, so my yeah. I, I i sorry i'm not used to this <laughs> i'm not used to this <laughs> You chose Electra, Black, White, and Blood, number one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty much those. It's like Batman, Black and White, or I think like Wonder Woman, Black and Gold. It's just yeah. uh, an anthology story um, with Electra, and I guess red is the only other color that's in it. Um, and it's got a, it's got some good creative teams on it. Um, I believe Charles Soule is tackling the character again. Um, yeah, there's uh I'm excited. I like I like stuff where like where I don't need to worry about the actual ongoing story. I can kind of just jump in, enjoy it. Is this uh, is this sort of classic Electra or is this? Electra? I believe it's whatever Electra they want they want at the time. It could be which it could be like the current Daredevil one. I, it it seems to be more of the classic Electra with the the bandana and all that. Uh, who else do we have on this team? Uh, Leonardo Romero um, is drawing some stuff, oh, so I haven't okay, seen no. him in a while. Um, uh, Declan so- Shalvey is writing this, so. So it's more of a um, character. It's, it's ninja perspective. Yeah, yeah. Situation like the. Okay, I see. I'm I'm really excited for this too. Low key, Electra is one of the best comics characters ever in terms of like great stories and stuff like that. Um, I I think she's underrated. There was that one, uh, Tyler. You can help me out. Um, 
there was one mini that someone did. Mike Del Mundo. Was, was it Mike? It was, it was Mike Del Mundo on art. And, and um uh who's the guy that's always with JH Williams? Um yeah, 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 yeah. Um why do I want to not not Mark, Hayden Mark, Blackman? Mark um, oh no, I think you're right. It was so. yeah, I think it was Hayden Blackman. Boy, was that a stunner. I did not expect that to be as good as it was. I was floored. Yeah, Electra Bloodlines. It was part of that uh that like all new run. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That DW was good Hayden stuff. Blackman and Mike Del Mundo. Yep. Yeah, that was good. Mm-hmm. That was good stuff. And it was like what like it's like one trade of it. Yeah. It super accessible. I don't know in terms of print. I don't know if you if you can get that physically anymore, but um definitely pick it up. It's fun. Yeah, that was that was really a uh, special a special run. Uh, you also chose Arkham City, The Order of the World, number four. Has this been good? I haven't read it. It's really good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, this feels like a Black Label book, except it's in main continuity. Um, all I got to tell you is that the art is by Danny. Like, mm. it's And it deals with a whole bunch of, like, D-list Arkham characters that escape prison. <laughs> and one of the... Um, the doctors or that's trying to help them but she's like not all there herself mm. uh, and like one of the main characters is like the ten-eyed man like it's just weird shit like that that i enjoy um but it ten-eyed is a man. good looking book uh and it's written by dan waters um who is uh a very very good writer too so cool uh kale you're gonna have to explain this one my man uh elvira <laughs> yes. meets vincent price number four so uh I've given dynamite a lot of shit over the years and that's not going to stop, but <laughs> uh, I couldn't pull myself away from Elvira meets Vincent Price when I was looking at the, um, uh, the solicits for the week. And I don't know anything about this book. So oh. I'm just going to, I'm just going to read the, uh, the synopsis here. And I got to say, they got me. Uh, Amunet reads the spell of the final day, and Amun-Ra returns, bringing death and destruction with him. And everyone's invited to watch on their favorite streaming service. Can they be stopped? Can the Mistress of the Dark save the world from a pair of ancient gods armed only with a DVD of an unreleased horror movie from the 70s? Sure, it sounds crazy when you put it like that, but you won't know how crazy till you read the Inglorious Bastet. What? Yeah, I don't know. That sounded like word salad to me. Yeah, me too. I enjoyed that. I got to check it out. <laughs> I was I was so. hearing that in like the narrator from the Powerpuff Girls' voice. Yeah. You know? Hang on, let me, let me see if I can do that. Yeah. Gotta find it. Can the mistress of the dark save the go. world yep. from a pair of <laughs> ancient gods armed only with a DVD of an unreleased horror movie from the 70s? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was feeling. You like? Uh, are you like an Elvira Vincent Price fan? I'm a huge Vincent Price fan. Okay. Uh, One of my favorite I, episodes of The Muppet Show, by the way. Yeah, tremendous. Yeah. Uh, I do like Elvira a lot um, for obvious reasons. Uh, but uh, yeah, this, I mean, this, despite it being dynamite, right up my alley. I feel like that's the right amount of camp. Um, uh-huh. and the, those two. I don't uh-huh. want to say properties. They're people. Those two people kind of match. Right. Up well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to need a review from you <laughs> next okay. week on that. You got to yeah. wake up in the middle of the night and come on to the, to the uh, Thursday. Just show start recording. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> written by uh, David Avalon, who has done um, other people properties like uh, Betty Page mm. um, and the artist Juan Semu. All right. So credit where credit to do. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you also chose Inferno number four. So did I. Oh, tremendous. I am so happy this is ending. Very upset that it's ending. But now I can get it in trade. I can do the whole thing. Um, and I can sit very happily with my Jonathan Hickman uh, events collection. And my life can move on. Okay. First of all, for shame that you're not reading this month to month. Um, well, I was trying to avoid that because I didn't want to be <laughs> called out on yes. the show, but you know, <laughs> fucking are, I guess. Uh, and and like like I'm not busy. Like I have things to do. Like support this household. 
that's barely holding itself together. Mm -hmm. I don't think, can you even get it with Brexit? Like, is that like a And that's the other thing. Fucking Brexit and COVID and fucking Russia blocking the, the shipments and Putin being in with Diamond, what am I supposed to do? Hell, you don't buy physical comics. <laughs> they have to pay for Yeah, so? There. I've Come never on, bought Sean. physical comics. Wait. So what the hell does any of that matter? <laughs> Putin's got the plug to the internet. Okay. Uh, listen, Inferno has been the good shit. This is the end of Hickman's era for now. If it's not, Everybody who said it's not gets a point at the end of the year. Uh, so I guess for your sake, you better hope it's not. Um, I'm really bummed that this is ending. I have loved every single page of Inferno. It's been brilliant. Mm. And uh, I, I, I can't wait to see how it resolves. Um, although I wish it wasn't ending. Tyler, I know that you were excited for this too, man. What do you want to say about it? I just want to see how it wraps up. Like, I know we've had theories on it and stuff on, on the review show, um, which I, I doubt any of that actually fully gets wrapped up. Maybe little little bits here. But I think it's it's more about letting the putting his toys out for other people to play with at this point. But um, I'm mm, curious, good I'm curious to see where it goes. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of reality to what you just said. Um, but e- e- even so, I'm I'm pumped. It's going to be cool. All right, so Marco's internet shit the bed, and uh, he can't get back. So until Spectrum gets a, a technician, until we get Tyler back to New York City. Nope. No, yeah, that's why you don't do the firmware update right away, guys. Alpha, <laughs> you got to wait for the, the, the gold release. Uh, so I'm just going to read Marco's pulls just so we get them out there. Apache delivery service, number one. No idea what that is. <laughs> Me neither. Couldn't tell you a single thing about that book. Uh, but Marco pulled it. And uh, not all robots, number five. This is, I believe this is AWA. Uh, um, yeah, it's Mark Russell. Mark Russell, Mike yeah. Diodato, I believe. Yeah. So uh, it's a good. Sh- strong creative team. It gives me um gives me visions, vision vibes. Uh, at least from the cover, because I haven't read it, but the covers give me vision vibes. Yeah, it's that's not the the actual story. Mm. Um, it's given me. I mean, I like Mark, Mark Russell as a as a, a writer, as a creator. Yeah, uh, and it is. If you liked his Flintstones run, um, it, this is more of the same. You know, uh, it's a take on society um, and the potential for where our society can go. It's like, oh, uh, we don't do jobs anymore. We have robots do it, but we all have like a house robot and that people treat like shit. Um, uh, and one issue, I think the first issue, um, one robot accidentally goes rogue and uh, kills everyone in Disney's magic kingdom by turning Whoa. the oxygen to poison or something. And that's like, oh, whoops. Crazy. That, only sound, that only sounds like a matter of time for real life, <laughs> frankly. You might be right about that. I'm not going to lie. We don't. Uh, have you guys ever seen uh, the Animatrix? Yes. No. It's been a long time, but yes. That's sort of the premise of the second Renaissance, which is the story that shows you why the Matrix happened, mm. uh, which is just humans got to the point where they created robots that could walk and talk like humans, and they made them go to work, and the humans stayed at home. Mm. Um, and then the robots got tired of being treated like trash and a robot killed its owner that was trying to kill it. And it became this whole thing that ended up in the matrix. Uh, so not all robots prequel to the matrix. Yeah. Basically. Uh, Ap- Apache delivery service. It's a new dark horse. Number one by Matt Kent and Tyler Jenkins. So yeah, that that's definitely oh, a, Marco, that's, a Marco. Okay. Marco. Yeah. yeah. That, that yeah. definitely tracks. Definitely. Interestingly, tracks. both of these also sound like hentai. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can see it to a certain degree. Not sure where you're getting that from, but <laughs> I mean, the uh, service is delivering things. Yeah, and not all robots. Not all robots. What? <laughs> <laughs> all right, fair enough. Uh, well, I want to talk about the Batman because oh this movie, it, it just. I don't like to get this excited about things, even though I get really excited about things. But this movie just feels like it's going to be really special. So we're going to watch the trailer, uh, the Bat and the Cat trailer, 
Uh, it has an actual title. Um, we're going to watch that now over on uh, video for you guys. Um, for some reason, I can't share my screen, so that's good. Oh, great. Uh, Does that mean I'm the, hold on. I guess I can't. No, Sean was made the host. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Okay, there we go. There we go. I'm good. Here we go. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yep. All right. So this is the third trailer that they've put out. Um, and it's, it's primarily based around Batman and Catwoman. Um, I think it's brilliant. I, they keep showing this this penguin uh, chase sequence. I love yeah. it. It man, it looks a lot like uh, the Dark Knight from a visual standpoint. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. There are Very echoes. Glad. I like that Batmobile. Very yeah. glad that Batmobile is not a tank, though. Uh, yeah, for sure. Like it looks like some kind of twisted metal car, and I'm I'm kind of down with that. How do you guys feel about this new Riddler? I mean, Paul Dano is creepy already. So, like, <laughs> yeah, that is Paul Dano. I'm a big fan of. Uh, I don't know if he's <clears throat> yet. I mean, nothing's gonna top Jim Carrey's rendition of. Of Riddler. course. I mean, come on. So, can we talk about Zoe Kravitz? Because holy shit, man! Over are, Jim Carrey's Riddler, thing? I don't think so. They're like a thing now. Currently, I think. He's still in that? his yeah. God, isn't how could you she, not? Isn't she with uh, Aquaman? No, that's uh, that's her mother. It is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, from the Cosby Show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her mother. What? That's her mother. Yeah. And her they look the same. Rabbits. Yeah. Oh shit. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. What's that guy? She's a she's a really talented actor. Um. She was on a show called Big Little Lies on HBO. That was really good. Uh, she was really good in it, rather. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lisa Bonet, of course. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Lisa Bonet, yeah. Um, this is also, like, from a visual standpoint, she's, like, the same as the year one Catwoman, right? Yeah, I hate it. Oh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's dumb i'm sorry it's dumb. Don't like the it looks the good beanie. it looks good on a uh in a comic book i don't think it looks good uh in the film oh you're so talking about adapt. her costume yeah 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 yeah. so don't adapt mazakelly into i'm getting heavy mazakelly vibes from this yeah yeah this is this is like from a visual standpoint i can't even imagine a better looking batman movie this is exactly what i want um this trailer is great it, it again we don't really need we don't really need any more trailers for this movie i got it already yeah after spider-man i'm like yo i'm, I'm done with trailers like <laughs> <laughs> yep. they're showing too much in this yep. yeah um although i will say i feel like they've kept a lot under the vest i really don't feel like we've seen much of this movie yet because like you even said they, they keep showing that penguin chasing yeah right. they, they keep showing the same four scenes you got pretty the much house, you got the the car chase scene the riddler like doing obscure things that we don't really know what's going on uh i think these trailers represent a good way to handle the fact that you've got to promote your movie um with trailers but also not giving away almost any story we what do we know we know the riddler is really upset and doesn't like the way Gotham is, and somehow Batman is involved in that. And Catwoman is around, and Penguin's a goon, and Batman's really pissed about his past. That's it. I'll be excited if they can um, do the mystery well, especially, you know, given what we we know from the trailers. And granted, what we know isn't much, but you know, how much longer is that going to be? I think this is, this movie has the potential to accomplish one of two things that Batman fans have routinely sort of complained about with the movies. One is that we've never really had um, a a mystery Batman movie. Um, And that's, that's like, I would say that's the number one complaint. 
and this movie seems like it's on point to uh, deal with that if the if the mystery works out. Um, the other thing, this movie's not dealing with it, but the other complaint is no Robin. So this movie can at least solve one of those problems. Um, but yeah, great trailer. I can't wait. Um, uh, this movie needs to come out now. Like, I wish I could just go to sleep and wake up the day I have to go watch it. I mean, it's what? Uh, March? March, yeah. yeah. March 4th. That's yeah, not that far. No, no, not at all. Um, so yeah. We will uh, we will continue to talk about this movie as it gets closer, but I really, really hope we don't see any more footage. So uh, <clears throat> let's let's talk about um, let's talk about Black Panther. So this the Black Panther story get going into uh, Wakanda Forever has been one that. For me, it's kind of sad. So obviously, Chadwick Boseman uh, died and Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige, they've said we're not recasting Black Panther. We're, we're not recasting T'Challa, I should say. Sure, yeah. hmm. um, and that's been their hard stance. And I believe that. I believe that for them, given that they were intimately aware of the actor, they had these real... Uh, this connection with him and what he meant to the Marvel universe. They just don't want to tread on that. And, you know, it's possible that it would feel weird to see somebody else play that character. Um, but we have talked on the show about the fact that we, or at least I have, I wish they would recast. And I'm apparently I'm not the only one who feels that way. Notably Derek Bozeman, who is uh, Chadwick's brother, told TMZ that he feels that Chadwick would have wanted T'Challa to be recasted. Uh, the quote, the, it's a paraphrase, but uh, from TMZ, they, they reported that he said, Chadwick thought T'Challa was bigger than just himself as one guy. This has, this, this has re-sparked the conversation about whether or not we should have T'Challa in the MCU, 50,000 people have signed a petition um, to recast him. So that prompted me to want to bring this, this conversation back up. Tyler, you've never shared your thoughts on the show about this issue. How do you feel? Should they recast T'Challa or should we go into uh, anti-vax uh, Letitia yeah, Wright as Black Panther? So here's the thing. Uh, first off, I will say that um, petition.org is the most useless website on the entirety of the internet. Um, if you spend any of your time actually signing those petitions, um, you've lost parts of your life trying to do that. It is pointless. <laughs> There's you no mean- point. It's just going to be on some aggregated news website. Um, your name will not be mentioned in it. You will not have made any change. Uh, you you do mean those else, petitions aren't going to be... They're not going to be seen by uh, President Joseph L. R. Biden. I thought it was. I think Obama still has to has to look at a couple of them. Uh, oh still, man! So, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that's where I'm starting from. Uh, secondly, I think I don't think you should necessarily recast T'Challa, um, but I think you should recast Black Panther. Um, somebody can be Black Panther without it being T'Challa. I'm. It is. It is a title within mm. Marvel Comics lore, and they've stressed it in the MCU. Um, but I don't think it should be Letitia Wright. <laughs> if, if I don't think it should be her if the buzz about her is true. Mm. I think that is too much of a gamble. Maybe, from... maybe, maybe the recasting conversation is looking from the wrong angle. I agree. Percent. That's, that's, that's yeah. kind of where I'm going. I think you can recast her. You had a blip. Five years went by. She was young in the first movie. You now got your out. Different. <laughs> yeah, you got your out right there. Well... Um, she the, the problem with that right is that black panther 2 is already you know underway it's well underway in production sure. right so she hasn't been able to film a lot though this is true but yeah. i gotta imagine she's filmed she's filmed you know sure. um so it would she, be she tough. got hurt filming so right um allegedly i don't know the exact story behind it but and it's not um unprecedented that they 
take an actor completely out of a film that is nearly finished. Sure. But she's almost assuredly the main character. I don't think so. I, if, I think uh, this is an ensemble piece. she's taken piece. out. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like this is an ensemble piece. Hmm. You know, the, the way it's been marketed as Wakanda forever. This is a Wakanda story. I don't think it's, it's centered on one character. I, I thought they were two separate movies. Huh? Is I wrong about that? Wakanda forever and Black Panther 2? No. Same movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It, that, yeah. That's just the, you know, they always have to have a, a, a name. Yeah. 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 Like I thought, I thought there was another thing. I think they announced oh, some kind of Disney Plus. The Disney Plus show. Yeah. I think it's called World of Wakanda tentatively. Think, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe that's, yeah. yeah. Um, if you want my take on this, uh, either you, you find a way to write Eric Killmonger back into it, um, or you give it to M'Baku. I thought M'Baku was great in that movie. Um, and then, you know, I, I think you have outs here um, if you don't want to recast anyone. Um, but I don't know. I think the character is important. The character of Black Panther, the title, the the lineage of it is important, but I don't necessarily, I don't think it matters who's under it. I would pull up the Brinks truck to Michael B. Jordan's house and say, whatever you need is in this truck. Come be Black Panther. Honestly, I felt he was more compelling in the first movie too, like as a character. Like that's the thing. Like I, they're talking about how T'Challa, it means more than that. And I don't necessarily, it's, I don't think it's T'Challa that means more than that. I think it is the, the idea of Wakanda and everything that it represents. I don't think it's, it's necessarily focused on this one character because I don't think we ever really got much. We didn't have time. Well, hold, know, up, hold, hold on, hold on. Let's put some respect on T'Challa. First of all, from a film perspective, I think that T'Challa added something really special to those movies. He's royalty, right? Yeah. Which is unique uh, among the, the the you know pantheon of Avengers, if you will, um, and obviously you have Thor, who's like a god or an alien god or whatever. But it, this is a, a a a member of a royal family on Earth, the ruler of a nation, and as the MCU grows, we know from the comics how important T'Challa specifically becomes to wider events you know they're going a secret wars route it feels maybe the illuminati i think that you gotta have t'challa right like he's so pivotal for those types of things um you gotta have iron man for those roles too well yeah, the mcu illuminati is not gonna be anything like yeah I, I, of, of course you need professor x you know yeah, but, well that yeah. could happen um it could it could but to chop like okay tony stark obviously is an important aspect of the Illuminati and, you know, the wider events of Marvel comics. But the thing about Black Panther is that there are a lot of people who wear suits of armor, right? Black Panther is the king of Wakanda. He actually has a stake in what happens on earth because it directly affects the people that he rules similar to Namor, which is why Namor is almost assuredly the villain of Wakanda forever and the movie was originally supposed to be about Black Panther, T'Challa versus Namor. You still think it's Namor? I feel like we would have gotten an announcement about that already. I'm almost 100% positive it's Namor. Yeah, we did okay. get an announcement. Was I don't know if it was official. We've talked about this on the show. Either. Yeah. We've seen we've seen rumored casting. I can't remember the guy's name. Um, and we've heard about this a lot, but I don't think Marvel has said anything. Uh. So yeah, to me... <clears throat> T'Challa is what I want. If I can't get that, then I want Killmonger. Shuri, I love Shuri. I don't have any problems with Shuri, the character as Black Panther. It's Letitia Wright that is a little troubling. I mean, I, I don't think... have anything against her acting either. It's just if those no. rumors are true about who she is behind the scenes, then there's... I think the thing, too, about making Shuri... Black Panther, which on its face, I don't necessarily have a problem with. I think it, it, it's sort of making the Black Panther mantle as a hero in, in the MCU. I feel like it might be making that character and that title take a step back. 
you know, it it sort of puts Black Panther two in a prequel or, or a, a first movie position. I see what you mean. Shuri's got to find her feet as the Black Panther when we had a Black Panther who, you know, ruled the nation and was Black Panther, and it was dope as hell. I think that would be my problem with that. I think the movie, so I think, Tyler, you said it was going to be more of an ensemble. That was your thought, right? That's what I feel, yeah. Okay. I think that's they have a huge cast already. Like, I think that that will be true up until the point at which Shuri, in my mind, unless something changes, has to become the Black Panther to defend Wakanda from Namor, which I would imagine being like a major you know, turning point towards the middle of the movie or maybe even later than that. So I don't know how much of an origin it will be in that regard, Kale, but I think it will address, to your point, um, her sort of like realizing someone has to shoulder this burden. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like throughout the course of the movie. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see at the end, like uh, if, if they're not recasting T'Challa, they have to kill him off in the movie. Like, I'm guessing somehow they can't just have T'Challa like, oh, T'Challa's on walkabout, you know? I mean, they could do the uh, Carrie Fisher deal and have the funeral, you know, be the first, the yeah. first thing that happens. Yeah, that's kind of how I picture it. And I can yeah. also see, like, maybe at the end, like, everyone becoming the Black Panther, you know, like, it's like, it is part mm. of Wakanda. And like, there is no specific not. Black Panther. Oh, gosh. I would be so, I would be so upset. And it's like, the the Dora Malahe aren't that anymore. It's like, oh, well, they're all Black Panthers. There, that's what defends Wakanda. I don't know. I could see that too. It's all up in the air, which is yeah. what kind of makes this movie the most interesting of all the movies that are on Marvel slate for 2022. Because we really don't know anything this year. Yeah, what the hell? Like, we don't yeah. know anything. I feel like that movie's gonna get delayed again. To be honest, yeah. I agree. I just yeah. I don't see how you could it could be coming out this year and we know literally nothing. Yeah, and then with with a with a, a PR um, taking a time bomb that Leticia Wright seems to be. Um, yeah, I'm not sure they want to really deal with that. She can't even film. Like it's yeah. just it's just not not looking good. Um, but uh, by the way, on the cast list for Wakanda Forever. Is someone named uh, Tenak Huerta, and from what I can see, um, he doesn't have. He's not credited with any particular role. I think this might be our. I, um, I, I think, think this. This, this might be our who, name Yeah, I think this is who I saw in the original announcement. Like I can see this guy's face. In the announcement that I Dude, saw, I, I love that Namor was too. Or... Like, uh... hugely Honestly, underrated. Here's here's my thing: give the mantle to Martin Freeman. You gotta go. It, it didn't even it didn't no, no, take no, you I, but one episode. I think, I think we need to hear him out. <laughs> no, we really don't. Martin Freeman, listen. Martin As a Freeman minority, I deserve. Fan... Yeah, I deserve I representation. <laughs> and um, listen. This is this is how it's got to be. I want to hear him out. Don't ask me to edit that out because I'm not doing it. Martin Freeman carried the superior Lord of the Rings trilogy, so I know All that right. he can. That's it. Get out. <laughs> See, never mind. Causing strife already. Never dude. mind. I All don't right, want sorry. it. Sorry. Sorry. Enough about that. Enough about Black Panther. We're going to continue to follow this this story. Um, Obviously, that's a movie, a character that's very near and dear to me and a lot of other people. So there's a lot of pressure to make this right. And I trust Marvel. So I think I think they'll do they'll do a good job, whatever it has to be. A lot of pressure to make this Letitia right. (laughs) Oh, God. Uh, Let's talk about Spider-Man No Way Home. Something that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, One last time. No way to not fucking talk about this movie Uh uh-huh nice um so obviously no way home has been a juggernaut the biggest success far and away uh movie wise of the pandemic era one of the most successful movies of all time 
so much so that it has done something remarkable. It has passed the dark night. Taken the dark night slot as the 12th highest grossing film of all time. Wow. wow. Uh, it also broke another record, too. What was that? Um, a movie to lead to the most deaths in real life. Who died? Um, all the people going to this theater and spreading that damn Omicron virus <laughs> <Yes>. around. <laughs> all right, listen, I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> we went to see No Way Home on Thursday. Yeah. The next day, my girlfriend was sick. Yep. So, could be. I'm just saying, guys. But no one died. We didn't die. We're alive. Uh, so not, I'd be very confused right now. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing the show right now? <laughs> um, so, it, pa- it surpassed The Dark Knight as the 12th highest grossing film of all time. Uh, domestically, uh, th- $536 million. Uh, and that's only so far. Who knows where it will go? Um, it could get a billion domestically, which, I mean, that that's remarkable. That's unheard of. Yeah, it, it got its billion without China. Am I right? Be- I believe that's I believe that's correct. A true American film with a British lead. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um. That's not the only major success that this movie has. Um, Spider-Man No Way Home is the only superhero movie in Rotten Tomatoes top 10 movies of 2021. Hmm. Yeah. Honestly, Suicide Squad, uh, I'm like torn, you know? Thank you. What? I really like the Suicide Squad. It's because it was good. I'm not saying it was bad. It was good. It was good. It was solid. But that that third act with Starro flopping yeah, fucking around Starro was in it. What are you two, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You're comparing Starro mm-hmm. to yeah? all three live action Spider-Man teaming up. Honestly, Starro is more surprising. <laughs> Thank you. Thank he you. He was in the he was in the trailer. How could that be more surprising? That it happened is more surprising. That that they did it. Yeah. <laughs> If you told me three years ago, Starro is going to be the main villain of a movie for uh-huh. DC Comics, or they're going to bring back the, the all, all the Spider-Man, I'd be like, no, that Starro shit's not happening. <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. What? Yeah. You guys are crazy. One obviously makes money, so it's obviously more mm-hmm. believable. <laughs> I miss Pete. That, that makes a hut. <laughs> Tyler, oh my God. <laughs> That makes 1,000% sense. If you had added the addendum, the Star movie is by James Gunn, I would have been like, oh, okay, all right. That, yeah. That seems more believable. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd even say, mm, I could maybe see that yeah, getting off yeah. the ground. If, if someone could do it, it'd be that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're telling me, because by the way, let's just establish a couple of things. Three years sure, ago, yeah. mm-hmm. the relationship between Marvel and Sony was not solid at all. In fact, a year later, it ended. So Listen, you're telling me you th- you I'm would just, you I just threw three years out there. I'm not saying specifically three years ago. So you what? Told me- at, at what point in time would all three Spider Men be a no brainer? Other than when it became the hottest rumor in film. If you put those on paper at any point since Tom Holland has become Spider Man, and then put it next to Starro as the main villain, I would believe the Spider Man for you're crazy. I can't I can't believe what you're telling me. Because how much precedent is already there? None. Sure. Yeah. None. That's, like, it's never happened. There are already three Spider-Man. You telling me they're not going to be in the same room at some point? There has Kale, never been Starro. Kale. You know what, dude? This is crazy. I <laughs> listen. I, I, I want to leave you in 2021. How I am br- I am breaching levels of thought that I never thought I could get. Yeah, you're getting closer to insanity is what's Fucking happening. Because of Starro. Maybe, maybe, maybe the Suicide Squad was actually the best superhero film of 2021. Starro was in it. Oh my god. It would be like it would be like if Fin Fang Foom was in a film. Yeah. Like, that's automatically the best film. It doesn't no. matter. First of all, first of all, Fin Fang Foom is way cooler than Starro. And also way cooler than Spider-Man. Sorry, I had a Starro hat for this one. Well, see? 
I, I didn't expect this. I didn't <laughs> expect this. I don't. I, I just wanted to gush about No Way Home. And you guys are You're ruining about that money in this capitalist society. You We're not seeing of any shit. of that money, Sean. God damn. So what? You know what I'm leaving back in 20, 2021? Huh? Capitalism. Exactly. Good luck with that shit. <laughs> I am a shill for Marvel. I love Marvel movies. A-S- and you can't. A-S-M-A-B. All Spider-Mans are bastards. Kale, it's a bit of a mouthful. Can we Kale. can we leave can oh, we leave yeah, the Sean, bad Sean comedy <laughs> in 2021? Is it can who's, we do that? Listen, who's laughing? Nobody. That's the point. That's we've what got, I'm saying. We've got this is a hundred percent serious. There are people listening to the show right now who are like, wow, Kale, why would you even say something so unfunny? I haven't even begun. I haven't even begun to try to be funny. All right. Anyway, shifting gears. I want to talk about what is next for spider-man truly though <laughs> sorry <laughs> i do have a question about that first thing <laughs> mm-hmm. um genuinely um about the uh, uh the dark knight bit no other marvel film has beaten that before no they have yeah. no, this is oh, the 12th okay. 12th the 12th the one ranking, that right? beat it 12 or 14 this no uh so this is this is usurping the Dark Knight as the 12th highest grossing film ever. Other superhero movies have also done that. It's just that now Dark Knight got bumped back again. I see. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, Infinity War and Endgame both did that. Surely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I don't even know. What else, what else? I don't even know that prior to this, prior to those, I don't know that the Dark Knight was the highest grossing superhero movie ever. That, that's probably a yeah, Spider-Man movie. Not. So, yeah, yeah, we got a Black Panther at 12, right. uh, Age of Ultron at 11, Avengers oh, really? at 8, Infinity War at 5, Endgame at 2. Yeah, so. Wow. Most surprising, Beauty and the Beast at 17. Hey, bro. Uh- that's the, the live love? action one. The live oh. action. Above oh, the live Spider-Man action. No one? Way. Yeah, above No Way Home right now. Oh, oh wow! God, what the hell? I saw it twice. I saw Actually, it twice. I, I didn't I, even really realize there was a live action Beauty and the Beast. Not it's that decent. I think about it's it. decent. No, come on. Luke Evans as Gaston. Good stuff. That's. Uh, I gotta get my all right, guys. You're gonna out me as a Disney adult. Let's, let's keep going. That's Spider Man. <laughs> Again, this goes to show CGI monsters do better than three. It's true. Ordinary dudes and there's also funny colored the pajamas. Only bestiality movie on this top twenty. Oh my Here go. god! Here we go, Tyler. This is not the law box. Now we're having the real you conversation. Know what you signed up for? No, I didn't. Clearly, <laughs> I didn't. In the contract. <laughs> uh, so again, my question is: What's next for Spider-Man? We know for a fact, based on conversations um, that we have read between Kevin Feige and people at Sony, that there is one more deal, one more movie deal in place. So they call it a, 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 a borrow. Uh, so Spider-Man is, is loaned out to Marvel. Marvel has to make a Spider-Man movie that features a character of theirs in with teaming up with Spider-Man. Um, that's been the sort of uh, cadence. We got uh, Civil War, Iron Man and Homecoming, uh, Infinity War. Um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Nick Fury, right? In Far From Home. Uh, no Way Home, Doctor Strange for Endgame. So there's one more loan that's going to happen. Who do you think the character ought to be that teams up with Spider-Man? What movie do you think Spider-Man appears in for Marvel um, that's a, like a crossover film? Daredevil. Hmm. I, think it, I, think, I think at the end of No Way Home, we're seeing a much more ground-level, bare-bones Spider-Man. Um, if you're going to give a rub to your street-level heroes, you give it the Spider-Man rub. Um, I don't know uh, where... I don't know if Daredevil shows up in Spider-Man or Spider-Man shows up in Daredevil. I don't know. But that would be, but I think I think that's where we're gonna go. Okay. We mentioned it. Geez, it must have been, yeah, it had to have been last week. Uh the Fantastic Four. Yeah, I mean, their relationship, right, is like that's that's, 
especially at the age of uh, that this Peter Parker is at and at his, you know, stage of life. uh, It makes sense that, that, what is it like issue uh, five or something of the original story? uh, The comics is him going to the fantastic four to ask for a job. Yeah. I mean, he is, he does need a supporting cast now. So Johnny storm. That's what I'm saying. Could work. I, I, I think I think that's a good idea. My only concern with it is that trying to get over the Fantastic Four as their own thing in their own movie, injecting Spider-Man into that might muddy the waters of whatever story they're trying to tell. Um, I could see a scenario, though, where Peter in, in the next Spider-Man film works for Reed. Yeah. In the way of like uh, uh, similar to the video game where he works with... Uh, Doc Ock. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Or uh, Johnny's his roommate. That's good. That's too much of a rom com, though. That's I mean, fun. I'd be into it. That's fun. It, it, the only, like, I want this to be more street level. And I don't know how, like, if, if let's say the Fantastic Four got involved in Peter's problems, that kind of elevates things. Now, you're, you, you know, your villain choice has to be a little different. Um, but the idea of them as roommates is so funny and good. I would love to see them do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. villain wise. So this movie, no way home was actually originally supposed to feature Craven before they realized that they could do what they ended up doing. It was going to be about Craven. Um, I still love that. I love the idea of Craven coming to hunt the spider and all that good stuff. I really want that to happen. However, now that Marvel has reintroduced the Kingpin, I'd really love to see that. Hmm, okay. That yeah, would be good. That was my first thought, but I do think the next one will be Craven because I think now uh, with the combination of Peter's identity being revealed and put on blast and the way that the film ends with Spider-Man now being uh, a menace front and center, it makes a lot of sense to me that Craven would come hunting. Well, remember, no one knows who he is anymore. Right, but he's still going to come hunt uh, the spider. Spy- Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. with that, yeah. yeah. And uh, to that, actually, I think that's a great opportunity for Peter to put on the black suit. I mean, he- do we have... We have Aaron Taylor, Aaron Taylor Johnson cast as Craven, right? Oh, yes for Never for mind. the yeah. solo movie. Yep. Ugh. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I think, it, I, think right. I think there's a better way to incorporate the the black suit. Go ahead. Into all this, I think the villain of the next one is J. Jonah Jameson. We've Yo. already got inklings of it. it. It's that. It's him. You know, it, that's how you get him back to the ground level. You already established that there is an antagonist, and from there you can bring in the Spider Slayer, Scorpion. I was going to say Alistair Smythe. And that's how you bring in your venom. That's not Eddie Brock. I love it. What you bring if in Matt Gargan venom, which is just a force of nature, and Matt Gargan's already been introduced. So that's not bad. What if Jameson and Kingpin team up? Kingpin has the resources. Jameson that's has a cameo. I could see that as a cameo to kind of yeah. interconnect things. Yeah, sure. They yeah they hire uh, Kingpin's like oh yeah I know a dude and it introduces Alistair Smythe. Yep. God the. Animated series, you know, so Scorpion. Fucking good. Yeah, dude, dude. The, the the video game Scorpion costume, so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. But then imagine that with the symbiote. You know, like he's been wearing the symbiote this entire time. He doesn't have the Stark tech anymore, but this thing gives him extra powers. And he's like, oh, okay. This is I I don't have the support system anymore, but this suit's giving me it. So mm-hmm. he goes a little crazy. He almost kills Scorpion. Yeah. There's the grudge. He decides, oh, I can't do this anymore. That's Mac just Venom. that's fucking um. Spider-Man, what is it? The the one we just read by uh, Chip Zdarsky. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Spider Shadow? Uh, Spider Shadow. Yeah, Shadow yeah, Spider. yeah, maybe not as dark, but yeah. But, that, I mean, that's that's kind of the the, the, the origin for, for Venom, right? Like, that's the symbiote. Yeah, yeah but I think you need to differentiate it from Eddie Brock at this point. So Make this asshole stand on his own two feet for once. Peter? Yeah. And get a new actor. <sighs> You've got to leave your biases at home. I don't care how many backflips this jerk can do. He's no good. You're no good. How about that? I know. 
and I can't even do backflips. That's why I'm not Spider Man. Yeah, I want to see you do a backflip. For when we get a thousand subscribers, I want to see you do a backflip. How about do a that? flip? I'll do it. Do a flip. <laughs> You'll do it. I'll do it. That's your word. Subscri- a thousand YouTube subscribers. Yeah, I'll do a backflip. Absolutely. I, I will get us a thousand subscribers by the end of this year. Let's do it. All right, you better start better training now. Into a, are we just doing yep. standing into a pool on a trampoline? Doesn't matter. It's just a backflip in general. A back, just a backflip. I don't in care how you do it as long as you do a backflip. I can do it. I still got I still got a little bit of uh, vigor in these old bones. I, I think I think a backflip will will tap you out though. I think yeah, I, I can do one backflip. Yeah, I think you got one more, and, and, and that will yeah. be all I can do for the rest yeah. of my life. But I got yeah. one. One of my friends injured himself trying to do a backflip. Not that long ago, so I'm eagerly anticipating this. Okay, yep. yeah, a thousand then, subscribers. Then Let's go. Oh man, but you um, have to do it by the end of the year. Or no backflip. It's it's gonna happen. So okay. Um. Yeah. I I feel like s- some amount of what we just discussed regarding Spider Man is what will happen. Um. Whether it's the Matt Gargan idea, Scorpion, J. Jonah Jameson, Craven, Symbiote. I feel like. Some amount of that is going to come to pass. Daredevil, Kingpin, I could see all of that. Frankly, I could see a lot of that happening in the same movie. Um, yep. But I do believe some amount of that is going to happen. Um, as far as just real quick before we move on, the next cameo for Spider-Man, like where he'll appear next as far as a non-Spider-Man film. Um, I'm, I'm going to say the next Avengers. Like a new surely. Avengers? Yeah, yeah surely. Yeah. I think he's got to be a part of that. Don't know yeah, when it's going to happen. I hope if they do a new Avengers, they bring Mike Coulter back because his oh, new cage is gosh. so good, man. Dude. It's so good. If they and, like, do. Luke cage is so integral to the new Avengers. So. If they do the new yeah. Avengers, like, you know, Bendis new Avengers, I'll lose my mind. I'll do two backflips. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, will, I will watch him do two backflips for that. <laughs> I almost, I almost, I almost d- dug a hole for myself. Uh huh. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I piece that one together. Tyler and I will do two backflips together. <laughs> um, so there's that time difference. I don't think it'll work, timing wise. So, you know. so yeah, that's that's my thought. New Avengers, Spider Man front and center, uh, with Captain Marvel as the leader. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's not what I want. I don't actually want Captain Marvel as the leader. But I, I think that's what we're going to get. Sam Wilson? You don't think it'll be Sam Cap? That, that's what I a... want. Right. That's what I want. I just feel like Marvel wants Captain Marvel to be the main character of the MCU. Hmm. So Interesting. Okay. Um, early on, the, the conversation was that Doctor Strange was going to be the new Iron main Man. character. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't think that Doctor Strange should or he doesn't feel like a leader. Um, I don't see him leading a team. He could still end up being the main character, I guess. Uh, He arguably is right now for like for this specific era. He might be. That's fair to say. But I think when it comes to leading the new Avengers, there's really only two options. And that's Spider-Man, not Spider-Man, sorry. Um, Captain America, Sam Wilson, and um, and Captain, uh, Marvel. Captain Marvel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that shakes out. Little update on a news story from last week. We talked about the Avengers Eternals event that appeared to be forming. Now we know that there's more to it than that. It's actually a three-way. It's a triple threat. The Eternals, the Avengers, and the X-Men are going to war. Judgment Day is coming in the summer of 2022. Marvel's promoting their next big event. A menage a trois blockbuster. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now this, last week I said, eh, I don't care about Avengers versus Eternals. This, I think I do care Just about. Add a little X-Men into anything. Yep. And then you're like, okay. Dude, you could pepper the X Men into literally anything, and I'm down for it. Honestly, we got X Men and Power Pack. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. That X- makes sense. Those kids are mutants, aren't oh, they? Oh, it's, it's it's happened. It's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, there you go. X Men and WWE. Let's get it. Roman Reigns versus Wolverine. 
Yeah, that oh, makes sense. I uh, just got news. Cyclops has been released. Um, <laughs> we wish him well and all the new mutants movies. they're doing new mutants 2.0 instead oh, okay all right looks like they're <laughs> they've changed up their minds okay well we'll see what happens uh oh, yeah so man. this I'm, I'm reading eternals i'm really liking eternals i'm reading avengers i am enjoying avengers um and i'm really liking x-men so i think it's only a natural conclusion i will read this um am i excited for it uh i don't have excitement built into me anymore it's been bred out of me but um <laughs> bread i will read it interesting yep um so kieran gillen is writing immortal x-men yeah this is true so i and it's well yeah absolutely so i I, and i'm assuming he will be the writer of this event that's a no-brainer what the hell like this this changes my thoughts about immortal x-men it was already the the x-men book that I'm most excited about in the destiny of X um, era. Now, knowing that it's probably going to be the lead into this event, or at least have some seeds planted. This is the most exciting Marvel book coming out in 2022 for my money. And also if you like high concept Hickman style storytelling, uh, what Kieran Gillen's been doing lately is that except with a little more humor and personality into it. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, so I think that's... he, that's like Gillen's die, bag, if, yeah. if you're reading die, die is fantastic. I mean, even Eternals, he made Eternals, the Eternals likable. Like Icarus is still a shithead, but he's almost likable because he's so dumb. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I, I'm a big Gillen fan. Uh, Once in Future, another good Gillen book right now. Um, uh, so, Peter Cannon uh, Thunderbolt. If you're that was good. Yep. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that was really good. So I can um, say if, if I can have any excitement, it's not necessarily for the idea of this, but if it is Gillen, it'd be the excitement would be for Gillen. That's so fair. is this like is this just gonna go across the the titles? I hope not. I hope it's a it's a it's an event that is you know its own thing. Whatever the title is gonna be, um, I hope it's its own thing. Because the the bleeding article, uh, the bleeding cool article that we have yeah. has Eternals, X-Men, Immortal X-Men, and then Avengers uh, listed as the the books. The books, I guess, for this event. So that's what, that's what I'm wondering. What do you mean the books listed for this event? Because we know that those books are going to cross over, but we don't necessarily know... That they're all connected. No, just we don't know that, like those titles are going to like whatever the event is called right we don't know that those titles will represent the event itself my assumption Uh is that the event itself will spin out of these titles into its own thing and we'll have a judgment day number one or whatever oh yeah exactly whatever it's going to be called that's my thought okay that's my hope right um yeah super excited for this i hope it's kieran gillen man i'd love to be excited about that Judgment Day by Jason Aaron. I'm out. Jerry yeah, Duggan? I think I think I'm no, out. Thank you. I think yeah. Really, I'm, I'm I'm a Jason Aaron fan, so I'm not not a Jason Aaron fan. I'm just kind of I don't know. I'm 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 burnt out. Maybe cool cool down on him since yeah the store stuff. Yeah 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 yeah. Um, I tried with Avengers. I tried really hard. But I just I just couldn't I just couldn't find it's myself goofy. in it. Yeah, it's it's a little goofy. It's off it's kilter. There's nothing wrong with that. We're gonna talk about it a little but, bit later. So, but yeah, there you go. A uh, little 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 tease there for you. Oh well, yeah. Um, speaking of which, now's as good a time as any to get into our uh our you know best comics of 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna do the comics awards. So. Uh, we've got several categories we're gonna run through. Unfortunately, Marco won't be able to share his uh answers to this but i'm sure we'll get his next week or maybe on social um but yeah here we go we're gonna get into our is, is there comics. a name for these awards is the, the comics are they called the commies <laughs> interesting <laughs> the, Cal, you down with uh you down with that one Pallies. i do the pals, like the commies the it's a good one <laughs> pallies, the is pallies. Okay. uh i played too much warcraft that's i was a pally i know i know that uh, I'm making an executive decision. It's the Pallies. <laughs> okay. All right. I wish That's I knew fine. what that meant. 
Paladin. Uh, it's a paladin. It's what you'd call a paladin. Wish I knew it. You guys are a couple of fucking paladin. Uh, a holy You're right, warrior. Dude. A holy warrior. Dude, is you that played D and D, right? Like, is a little more. Don't they have? Dude, I played a paladin in our short-lived D and D group. <laughs> you did? Yeah, it was a minotaur paladin. I used to smite people with my horns. I remember. Which you I, I think I did minotaur. once in that time. Yeah. <laughs> Pallies, it is. Pallies, it is. Yeah. The Pallies 2021 incoming. Welcome, everyone, to the Pallies, the 2022 Pallies, where we are going to be reflecting on the year's worth of comics that came out in 2021, our favorite books, our favorite creators, our favorite stories in comics. This is purely comics focused, uh, paying tribute and homage to everything wonderful about comics from 2021. I will say, I think 2021 was, it's one of the better years I can recall in comics. There are going to be a lot of books and creators that we don't talk about today. And that's not because we didn't love their books or we didn't love the work that came out. I think there were so many phenomenal books that came out this year, but we're going to just celebrate the ones that were nearest and dearest to us. Um, and it's our list. So hopefully you enjoy it. And we'd love for you guys to share your answers to um your, your awards that you would give away to these for these uh categories let us know in the comments um on the discord wherever you get us um how you would uh award these categories so let's start things off uh with best writer best writer kale why don't you start us off with best writer so for me best writer uh gotta be kale ward he really stepped up this year and wrote. No, I'm just kidding. Are you going to um, say uh, the best writer is common writer? But mm. a this one's pretty good this year. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah. For me, best writer 2021. Got to be Ron V. Mm. Um, he wrote everything he wrote um, connected with me, even if I didn't completely understand what he was doing. <laughs> um, I think specifically about Swamp Thing. First third of Swamp Thing, yeah. Really, really enjoyed his Swamp Thing. Couldn't tell you what was happening whatsoever. <laughs> so, isn't that why um, all men like Swamp Thing? Is that that's it? It's a it's a uh, an ever widening puzzle that we just keep trying to put together, and it's always on our minds. Uh, uh, our interview with him um, has really stuck with me in the same way that uh, Brian Edward Hill's interview has, um, and specifically what he said about um, the the idiom that there are only you know seven stories or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I can't get that out of my mind, and the many deaths of Layla Starr to me is. Uh, a, a huge example of that um so you're yeah, referring I, to what he said which was that the idea that there are only seven stories a very western concept yes and yeah. that outside of the west there's all kinds of different stories that get told we just don't know about them yeah 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 did i i, I don't know if i said this on the show uh <clears throat> but i i was part of a, a writing group um over the summer and we spoke to a, like a published children's author and, you know, she's published several books and, you know, certainly has a, uh, a, a portfolio or whatever, mm -hmm. but she started talking about the, the seven stories and she was like, this is it. These are the stories. And I went, are you sure? <laughs> yeah. That was a classic yeah. interview, by the way. I, man, I really loved his interview. Yeah. So yeah, Ron, Ron V for me. Okay. How about you, Tyler? Um, for me, I wrote down uh, James Tinney in the fourth. I think in, 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 in sheer output and quality of that output, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. been a crazy year for Tinian. Um, you know, there's, you know, nice house on the lake, which we've, we've been talking about on the, um, the weekly review shows, which is great. Um, his very different take on Batman with uh, Batman and, and Fear, Fear State. Um, and then uh, one of my books, which I, I believe will be, I'll, I'll be mentioning later, Department of Truth at Image Comics. Um, really wild book uh, that he's been doing. It's 
uh, I find that at least every month I'm reading at least like three or four Tinian books, which um, wow. which is not something I would have I really would have said a couple of years ago. To be honest, yeah. um, I was I, I was I I knew there was a uh, skill there, but I thought that his things could be a little too much like prose, a, a prose writer writing comic books. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he's really kind of coming to their uh, to their own this this year specifically. So, yeah. Um, are you reading something is killing the children and or House of Slaughter? I read the first issue of House of Slaughter, but I, I felt a little because I, I never. I read like the first issue of something is killing the children, but uh, mm. I kind of dropped off. But uh, I, once I read House of Slaughter, I'm like, oh, there's a world here that I missed out on. Uh, right. Yeah. I can't really get into it. But yeah. Um, OK. My answer. Is. And, you know, you talk about things you never thought you would say. Uh, if you asked me last year if I thought I would be saying this person is the best writer of 2021, I would have said <laughs> no. Um, hey, Williams. My- <laughs> No, no. She just has the best plots. Um, My answer, I'll explain it later, Tyler. Oh, no, you know what it is. Um, My answer is Tom King. Oh, love heroes in crisis, huh? No, 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 no. We we left that in 2019 or whatever that was. Um, I loved everything that Tom Tom King put out this year. When you're talking about Strange Adventures, uh, you're talking about Rorschach, which was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Even um, The Human Target, which is only on its third issue now, but is mind-blowingly good. Like, I'm so impressed by that series, and I highly recommend that you read it. Um, I think Tom King has been consistent. Even Supergirl, which, you know, I haven't necessarily loved, um, but it's strong. It's strong. Um, Tom King is firing on all cylinders and I'm so impressed by how he was able to, and this is a little bit, I, I, I'm not trying to be rude when I say this, but I'm impressed by how he turned it around because heroes in crisis, I didn't think was great. And, you know, there were certain other things that just weren't, you know, weren't lighting me on fire, but now I feel like the guy can't miss and he always gets the best artists and his stories are engaging. So for me, uh, yeah, Tom King. Tom King's my guy. There were other great writers. I think both of the writers you guys selected are phenomenal, but I just think Tom had a phenomenal year. So, and I think being able to like kind of uh, pivot after you know Batman, which I love, but the internet apparently didn't. Um, and Heroes in Crisis, just the sheer amount of bullshit he got from the internet. Mm-hmm. Like it's almost impressive that he was able to just kind of still put out output that is great. You know. Yeah. Well, it- and like still it's wanted to. Under that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk about best artist. Best artist. Tyler, why don't you start us off? I have my boy Daniel Warren Johnson as best artist. Same. That's yeah, my best I, artist as well. Yeah. And it's not necessarily because of Beta Ray Bill. Yes, Beta Ray Bill is fantastic. It's up there. In my Once we get to our top five, it's up there. Spoiler. Um, I mean, we're in a damn Beta Ray Bill shirt right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's everything he's like even done outside of that you know like if you follow him or like a felix comic art comics art which like uh distributes his artwork um this guy puts out so much commissions and sketches yeah. like his output is nuts and also probably chillest dude in comics currently we met him. He's amazingly yeah. chill. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, and I and I, and I like that the he has been teasing a wrestling comic book that I talked to him about two years ago about, mm. um, uh, on uh, coming up and all his like AEW and New Japan pro wrestling stuff that he's been drawing. You know, it's it is my jam completely. Beta Ray Bill, I think, gave someone a burning hammer in a Marvel comic. Ah, <laughs> yes. Yep. Can't can't say no to that. Uh, so for me, this one, I, I feel like this is, this is probably my answer last year too, but I'm always impressed with Pepe Larraz. Um, mm-hmm. I think Pepe Larraz is brilliant. And my favorite, like, spoiler, I guess, ongoing story in comics right now is Krakoa. You know, it is what's happening with the X-Men. And there's no one who has been more important from an artistic perspective to that than Pepe Larraz. You could make an argument for Russell Dodderman, but 
when it comes to getting in the trenches, Pepe Larraz is that guy. He established the look and feel of the X-Men just as much as Jonathan Hickman established what the story is. And Pepe Larraz got in the trenches this year a few times uh, when it comes to Ten of Swords, uh, which the event wasn't great, but the art always was, you know, um, for his parts, at least. Um, And then the core X-Men book with Jerry Duggan, which, you know, regardless of what you think about that series, which I've been enjoying, um, Pepe Larraz has been brilliant. So um, then Planet Size X-Men was amazing, too. Like just so many um, great things that he did. And again, it's not as he wasn't as um, involved as he was last year. But I don't think that his contributions were any less important or beautiful. So for me, it's Pepe Larraz. Mm. Kale? My artist was uh, Daniel Warren Johnson. Um, very for a lot of the same reasons Tyler listed. Um, but I mean, beta Ray bill dude, like, uh, what's not to love there. He wrote and illustrated that book, um, with, uh, Mike Spicer on colors. And the book has this insane emotional core that hits you from like page what 10 of the first issue. Like you feel something for this alien Norse God that like you you shouldn't and it's weird, but it works. And uh, the art that goes along with it is uh, Pete, you know, Pete used to call it comics with an X, Mm. you know, that eighties underground style, thick lines. And um, uh, it's just so good and dynamic. Um, And I had a really hard time between um daniel Warren johnson james heron and uh marcelo costa but i think daniel Warren johnson is a an incredible amalgamation of what i like about uh those two as well marcelo costa and um uh james heron and the 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 movement of of his images the the uh, uh the the feel of his uh his sound effects you know that he bakes into the uh the art uh yeah for me it it had to be had to be daniel warren johnson okay daniel warren johnson getting love times two from you guys that's awesome the double pally yeah um best colorist i will kick this one off with martha gracia you know pepe Larraz and martha gracia go together like you know, rice and beans, like they are, that's, they are the dynamic duo uh, from an art perspective, in my opinion. Kale, Kale rice and beans is something. Um, <laughs> that... <laughs> Listen, I'm from the South. All right. Okay. All right. All right I'm all right. white, but I know a thing or two. I'm not saying I understand it, but I you know, I it. do, I do know it. <laughs> yeah. I think Pepe... of Popeyes. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, Martha Gracia was everywhere this year. Um, it wasn't even just the X stuff. You also had Empire, which was not good in my opinion, but it looked good. Um, and Marta Gracia was a big part of that. Um, of course, the X-Men stuff just all over the place. Sword, which was uh, great from an art perspective as well. So Way of X, you know, which I didn't love. But again, everything that Marta Gracia touches is elevated. And I think in comics, Colorists, uh, letterers, and inkers often don't get their just desserts because sometimes the best thing you can say about a colorist or an inker or whatever is that they didn't get in the way. Um, and I feel like a lot of times when we talk about colorists, we're talking about what they did wrong, like um, with um, with skin uh, tones, yeah, marauders <laughs> yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. Marta Gracia is one of the best colorists ever in my eyes, and I think he showed that this year. Kale, colorist. Yep. Uh, Kale, you, right. want me, you want me to go first while you are. Uh... <laughs> uh, no. Well, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat just a little here. Okay. Because, yeah, so I'm gonna skip ahead to the team category because for me, the team. But hold on, there's a reason. Pepe Larraz and Marta Gracia uh, were the perfect team for me. 
because of the colors. Mm. Um, I love Pepe Larraz. I think his his art is incredible, but uh, Marta Gracia, I think, adds that extra level of like if Pepe Larraz is a hundred percent, Marta Gracia takes it to two hundred. Like what they did together um, in establishing Krakoa and then continuing Krakoa and making a visual language. Um, to extend across the uh, uh, you know the the lines, mm. no matter how disconnected they felt, there was always a language, and it worked tremendously. Um, so I guess colorist has got to be Marta Gracia. Okay, Tyler, uh, it's Mike Spicer for me. Um, Spicer everywhere. is the colorist in two of my favorite books this year. Uh, the Swamp Thing and Beta Ray Bill. Um, his use of like uh, secondary colors, uh, kind of bucking the trend of the, you know, the superhero primary color, you know, mm. um, kind of almost a crutch that most superhero comics have. Mm. Um, really, really brought something to the table. And you mentioned, you know, like, a, you know, sometimes the most we can think about, we can talk about a colorist is when they, you know that they didn't get in the way i think mike spicer actually le- elevated the art mm. in, in a lot of senses you know if you if i if i had if you told me uh, i have a black and white uh, version of beta ray bill sure that'd be great but it'd be missing something you know right and i think i think spicer is an integral part to that what if we just got a mike spicer version of beta ray bill no just just colors <laughs> yep sure <laughs> <laughs> a little abstract, but I'll, 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 ch- I'll check it out. Why not? Yeah. Best storyline. Um, I'm going to go. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's Krakoa. Just everything Krakoa. Um, everything going on with the X-Men even, right now. Even when the bag, when they do bad things and then they get shoved into the, in the Krakusi. The what? The Krakusi. Yep, we've done it. This is the long box too. When you know when they the op- it opens it. up and Krakoa opens up his hole and then the people fall in it. Yeah, the Krakusi. Is that what's called? I, yep. No, you're right. Bringing that back oh from that episode god. I did with Marco. <laughs> yeah, the long box too. We've done it. Oh my god! Is what did this I do? Is, they just added is, two more uh, people to the Krakusi last uh, last issue of Hellions. So. Never. I never thought I would hear that. That's that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Does it work? Uh, oh, no, that's the thing. You're you're a hundred percent correct. <laughs> um. Wow. <laughs> I don't even know how to follow up on that um, storyline. Uh, right. Right. Uh, Inferno has been phenomenal. Um. I, I I can't get enough of the saga of the X Men as it's been unfolding. Uh, obviously. Um, the Ten of Swords event was not the best by any means, but I think the Hellfire Gala was slamming. Um, Ten of Swords just turned out to be an episode of uh, Nickelodeon Guts. <laughs> what the hell is that? You guys never saw Guts? Yeah, I, I think I know Guts. Yeah, the, the aggro crag, it was just uh, games, really. Mm, I might have seen it. I might have seen it. But um, yeah, I, I can't get enough. This is the kind of like soap opera stuff that I read comics for. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, I don't think I've gotten anything close to this since I was a teenager in terms of like feeling so enraptured by a comic story. And it's not just one book. It's, it's tons of books, you know, too many books, arguably. Um, I can't get enough. It's the best thing going in my opinion. So Krakoa, how about you, Tyler? Uh, for me, best storyline. I actually, uh, there it is. I misspelled it. Uh, Rorschach, uh, okay. the entirety of Rorschach uh, by Tom King and Jorge Fuentes. Um, it's just ooh, uh, the idea of a Rorschach book in 2021 uh, was a little, little sticky when I first heard it. I'm like, oh, mm. and it's Tom King? Mm, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but he kind of carves his own path in this thing. And it, this is really just a good noir book that is set in the Watchmen universe. It is not really dependent on what happens in Watchmen. It's really just part of that universe. And the fact that it was even able to work 
and a, also work as well as it worked um, is was a surprise and I really enjoyed it. And, and Fournier as an art uh, throughout this whole, whole thing was fantastic. Yeah. I also didn't know where each issue would take me either. And it was kind of a surprise each issue. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's what I love. How about you, Kill? Uh, Storyline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Electra as Daredevil. Mm. Okay. I think that uh, that storyline to me, like I, I've read the first few volumes of, of Zdarsky's Daredevil run, and I'm not quite up to Electra yet, but just uh, I guess this is representative of Zdarsky's Daredevil stuff, uh, um, you know, up to this point. I think it's such an obvious evolution of Daredevil. I can't believe it hasn't happened. Like it makes so much sense. And I love the possibilities of it. I love the different strands of thought that Zdarsky probably took to get there. I love the potential for the stories that could come out of it. Um, I just, I think the design is incredible. Um, I'm just, I, I love it as I love Electra as Daredevil as a, a new evolution for Electra as well. Whoa. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's where I'm at for the storyline. Awesome. Let's talk about the best creative team. Uh, Kale, you, you kind of teased us earlier with yours. So why don't you speak to that if you want a little more? I, I mean, I said everything I need to say, but, okay. um, you know, the, uh, they have the best, combination of visual language that established an era Laraz and gracia 2022 okay how about you tyler um i actually put a uh, rom v mike perkins and mike spicer on the swamp thing mm. um i think they really gel all together um when the the pages can be these weird splash pages and the panels are the panel breaks are veins between a leaf. It's it's storytelling on three levels, which I think once they're together, it's like this weird like fusion um, that really a lends itself well to a Swamp Thing story, and then B just lends itself well to a, a just a good story. Um, so yeah, that, it's the the Swamp Thing creative team for me. Yeah, um, that's the one that I want to go with. Uh, as well but i'm gonna go with something else because you already took it um tom king mitch jareds and doc shaner that's good um strange adventures was a trip and visually you know all about this <laughs> <laughs> oh man um anyway uh strange adventures was incredible I think that that creative team did such an such an amazing job. And one of the things about it that was so special was, you know, you talk about storytelling on three levels. Not only did you have the writing on Strange Adventures, the art, the colors, all of it was telling a story. The colors were telling we uh, Marco and Kale did like a whole breakdown, if I remember correctly, of just the, how the colors were telling the story. Yeah. Um, that was one of the best reviews we ever did. And the book allows you to talk about it in that way. Um, and that's the strength of all three of them together. The way that comics are made, sometimes creators don't even necessarily interact that much. You know, mm. the writer will send the script, the artists will do what they're told and the writer will make some notes and that's it. This was a, a book where like, it had to be collaborative. There's no other way you could get something that looks like this or that feels like this. And so for me, that's too special not to, not to uh, award. So yeah, Tom, Mitch, and, uh, and Doc Shaner for me. Um, best event. This one's a little weird because I think as great of a year as this was for comics, not a great year for events. I chose Inferno. I don't really think that there's any competition uh the first three of four issues dropped in 2021 and they're all phenomenal 
Um, I don't even know what you would stack that up against. And I don't know what event has come out from the big two in the last few years, even um, that's not from the X-Men that you could put alongside to compare to Inferno. It's been absolutely stunning. Brilliant. I could not answer this one. I wanted to say Inferno, uh, but uh, you know, as, as we uh, said, I, I'm not reading it monthly. So um, I, I didn't have an answer for this one. All the events this year have not impressed me. Okay. Uh, for me, I have a bit of a hot take on this one. Uh, Heroes it's Heroes are Born. It'll be close. Heroes are Born. <laughs> Jason Aaron's uh, Avengers event wow. with uh, Ed McGinnis. That's um, is a it Blade. Um, it is Blade adjacent. Um, so essentially, um, Coulson has made a deal with Mephisto, and the Avengers of the United States is the Squadron Supreme. And he made a right. deal with Mephisto to pretty much rewrite reality where the Squadron Supreme were always the team. I think that and I think the Avengers never that. existed. I think we read the um, first issue or did. two of that. Yeah. yeah. The first one. And uh, I, I like the storytelling device of kind of reestablishing each member of the Squadron Supreme in their own kind of one and done shot uh, one shots. Uh, there was um, who's the the um, the Green Lantern knockoff with the, the prism or whatever. Like Dr. Spectrum. Yes, yes. Uh, like that. that was drawn by, um, uh, oh, I just totally blanked. Um, I'll have to look this up, but it was, um, it's got by the, uh, Kale, it's by the guy who did like a, the Godzilla 22,000 or whatever. Uh, <laughs> Kale's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Half Century War, uh, James Stoko. There was a James Stoko issue of a major Marvel event, and James Stoko is. That is. Oh, dude, look up James Stoko, Godzilla book. It's, it's if you like James Heron, you like Daniel Warren Johnson, this is this is down your alley. Um, but it was a, it was just good old fashioned superhero comic books. Um, meanwhile, you have a a good backup uh, of Blade kind of re reforming the Avengers drawn by Ed McGinnis, which is like Ed McGinnis is like classic Marvel, you know? Yeah. Um, so it, it was. Not what I expected, especially when you have the title Heroes Are Born, which is uh, loaded. The last time we had Heroes Are Born, <laughs> yeah. uh, we got uh, a titty cap, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> didn't get that in this. But uh, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with Heroes Are Born. Fuck, you're right. This dude looks rad as hell. Yeah, not someone you would see on a major Marvel event for anything. How about best surprise comic? So, um, I guess I should have clarified this to you guys before. What I meant by this was the comic that surprised you, the one that yeah. you didn't expect to be. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, it's not Die, 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 you know, <laughs> that that Kirkman book that came out. It was announced right. on the Wednesday it came out on, yeah. Uh, what do you have for this one, Kale? Uh, so I took it the other way that I think you intended it. Um, I said the Hellfire Gala because I was surprised at how much I did not like it. Okay. Um, I I felt like the what it sets up felt like a a last step, and the hype around the event itself was uh un unfounded, I think, and the execution didn't deliver. Okay. I, th I, I, th the device that they used where they sort of, um, tell the story of the night through different books was interesting, but for me, it didn't, the, the ending of it didn't amount to what they, I don't think it did what they wanted it to. Right. Yeah. And I think the 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 hype around it, you know, the the costume, the different costumes and the fashion show and the celebrities or whatever, I think it it all felt like more distraction for this other thing, you know, which was the the X-Men ruling on Mars or, or terraforming Mars or whatever, um, which should have been a lot bigger deal in the book i think so it just didn't work for me and i was really really looking forward to it 
Um, and I was surprised that it didn't, they didn't pull it off. Okay. Uh, for me, I went with thing, the thing book, um, Hmm. that book knocked me off my feet. Um, Walter Mosley is like a person who I'd never literally never heard of before, uh, before this book, he is a novelist, um, that, you know, is like, I think he's like 60 something years old, which I didn't expect. And this is his first book. This is his first comic, um, which I, I just couldn't believe. Um, Tom Riley did the art on it as well. Um, Jordi Belair did colors. Joe Sabino did the letters. Just, just brilliant. Um, and, and, and again, a big surprise. I picked it up not knowing what to expect. It ended up, you know, being mind blowing. What about you, Tyler? Uh, so for me, my surprise would, it would be actually, uh, the Eternals by Karen Gillan and Asada Rebek. I mean, like, sure. The creative team just sounds like something that would be good. So there's yeah. not much of a surprise there, but the fact that it's the Eternals and it is enjoyable, unlike the movie, um is what what's the surprise for me i didn't think i would like an eternals book i mean yeah i've read the uh like the game and stuff but like like since then they haven't really hit you know they they don't really exist they're not even like in other books either they just don't exist outside of this um but it's good it sets a good status quo it um makes thanos the big bad of the eternals again which makes sense um it's good it's good stuff all right. Um, well, we're getting close to the close to the end here. We've got favorite comics news stories. So the thing that you just were so happy happened, or you know, we're so excited to talk about whatever whatever comes to mind for you, Kale. What do you got? Mine was the Substack news. Hmm. Um, I think I think the thing was I was interested to talk it out. Um, and at this point, I think it's still maybe a little early to say it's a success, but I like what, at the very least, you know, I like what the model seems to be. Um, I, you know, I'm still only on Scott Snyder's, uh, sub stack. No, that's not true. I'm signed up to the Zdarsky's, but I'm not paying for it, mm. but, um, I really like you know, that it, it gave whatever this is, is giving creators a chance to, uh, you know, jump headfirst into their own projects and to do what they want to do. And, and I, I, I love the fact that for Scott Snyder, that meant teaching. I think that's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's not to say that the others aren't just as good, I'm sure they are. I'm just not signed up for them. But yeah, I love the uh, the agency that it gave uh, creators, and and I think it has the potential to be a really cool moment, or not. Could be the <laughs> you know end up being the exact opposite. Time will tell. Uh, my answer is going to be uh, Jonathan Kent coming out as bisexual. Um, that was the only news item from comics that caused people in my life to want to talk to me about what was happening. Um, and I really loved the conversations that it created, even if it exposed some people's, you know, homophobia or whatever. Um, I think that for comics to drive a conversation like that is a rare and be special um it 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 helped establish jonathan kent as a character who is uniquely different from his father um and i think a lot of times that just doesn't happen you know like these characters blend into each other and it almost feels like the son of x or you know the the next person up on the mantle doesn't feel unique and this helped establish kent as that it was cool to see Tom Taylor making the rounds, you know, CNN and Good Morning America and all these different um, news outlets covering this story. And for him to be almost an ambassador for comics, I think that was pretty cool as well. Um, And 
to be honest, I was happy that so many people were mad because it's bullshit to be mad about that. So um, that's my answer. I, I love that that happened. Um, I think it was special. And, you know, you can't have that happen too often and really get buzzed. Like you see, no one's really talked much about Robin, um, Tim Drake, Tim Drake yeah. having that same sort of coming out. Um, this was special. And uh, I'm, I'm really glad about it, that it happened. I, I um, think the colorist isn't too glad that it happened, but <laughs> that was funny too. That was, that uh, yeah. was good. That was a good. Addendum. That was instantly uh, instant uh, fuck around and find out sort of situation, <laughs> which, uh, which I enjoyed. <laughs> I loved how fast that was. Um, so I, I guess I can say mine. Uh, mine is more comics adjacent. Okay. Um, it deals with the Harley Quinn TV show. Um, uh Talk, uh, the creators talking about how they had a scene of uh, Bruce Wayne going down on the Catwoman. Uh, that was oh, cut. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is Zack Snyder then tweeting a fan art of Catwoman <laughs> going, uh, no, Batman going down on Catwoman, tweeting the, the, the with the caption, canon, and then <laughs> WB putting a DMCA claim on it. <laughs> because uh, it's just messy and i like mess that's the kind of stuff i like that's so. brilliant i forgot about that dude i'm yep. so glad you he doesn't that exist up. anymore oh my god warner brothers wow yeah that i forgot that was a major deal as well but also if that's canon in snyder's universe ben affleck does not go down look at that dude that guy you don't think so no hell no no you think, you think jennifer like lopez lover. you think jennifer lopez is sticking around for that He's got Batman money now, though. I don't, I don't know. I mean, Jennifer Lopez has money. She has <laughs> J-Lo money. Uh, he's got to be working with something else, though. I'm just saying. Uh, that's, that's the vibe I'm getting. That's the vibe I'm getting. I don't know, dude. All right. Well, uh, how about most shocking news story? Uh, so the thing that happened that was just, it just blew your mind. You couldn't believe it. It was a shock. It was a big surprise. My answer is Jonathan Hickman leaving the X-Men. Same. Didn't yeah. see that coming at all. It blew me away. It's the most disappointing news of 2021 uh, in comics, but it seemed as though he was hired by Marvel again and paid big money to do this. So yep. what the hell is happening that he's leaving? Yep. I couldn't stop thinking about it. Couldn't stop talking about it. Obviously, it still permeates our show to this day. So, yeah, that's my answer. Mine is is sort of connected to that actually. It's Substack. Uh, oh, a big surprise for me. Okay, like that that came out of nowhere. Like, yeah. oh, here's this new company that's going to poach the biggest names in comics right now, um, and pay them huge sums of money to kind of just do what they want to do, just to right. launch this new startup. Um, and it has inst- it had instant shockwaves. You know, Hickman. You know, one of them, uh, Tinian. Tinian, as well. You know, the two, I would say arguably the two biggest writers for their companies. Like Tinian was probably one of the biggest people at DC at the time, you know, yeah, spearheading the entire Batman line and, mm. you know, Hickman doing the same with Marvel. Um, and then like Zdarsky and stuff like that. I mean, it, it's great. I think it's, it's great that, you know, uh, writers can actually get paid um, and with freedom, you know, mm. but it, we don't know what the lasting effects of it are. Um, so, and it did kind of just come out of nowhere, you know, so that's it for me. And then Kale, did you want to speak on Hickman at all or? I think it's, yeah, like you said, it's something that still reverberates. Like I, I found out after the fact and I had to have things clarified for me. So it was like getting hit with a baseball bat and then getting hit with a metal baseball bat over and over. And like, I still remember you know every now and then that that's happening and inferno's it and x-men's not gonna be fun anymore (laughs) (laughs) and it just happens over and over again and it just it still just you know reverberates Mm -hmm. uh well we are at our last category we're giving away our last award This one is for best series. So the best overall series that released in 2021. Uh, Tyler, why don't you kick us off? It's a beta ray bill for me. 
cosmic marvel with an injection of pro wrestling like it's literally tailor-made for me um yeah i loved everything about the book every time there was an issue that came out it was the first in the stack that I would read um but yeah if, if i'm giving a number one spot it's beta ray bill yeah. yeah that was phenomenal truly special uh how about you kill uh i think mine is uh made in korea uh from jeremy holt and george Shaw. yeah yes yep nice um that that book really um it kept me captivated in uh in a fun way that wasn't necessarily exciting but it was like it kept me asking questions and thinking of the possibilities and that uh jeremy and, and george chose the directions that they take the story in was continually surprising um and i like where i like where it ends i like uh where jeremy has said that they plan to take the story um i i i think it's it's a good you know five minutes ahead in the timeline uh story that just it will tug at your heartstrings it will make you think about what it means to be a human and what it means to you know rethink the way we learn and what intelligence is and what artificial intelligence is um and it will i i i think it will make you it will make you think about being a, a kinder person hmm yeah, I mean, I honestly couldn't, I, I couldn't choose between these two books. Um, so I'm going to just shout them both out. Made in Korea and Swamp, The Swamp Thing. Mm. Um, these were the two books that just kept rattling around in my brain all year long as they were releasing. We had both writers of, of the books on our show. Two of the best interviews that we did this year. Mm -hmm. um, man, The Three. Swamp... Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, the Swamp Thing, since Kale already spoke about Made in Korea, um, the Swamp Thing was special, is, it's still ongoing, um, just on a break right now. It's very special. D I did not think that at the end of 2021, I would be saying Swamp Thing's my favorite book. I, I yeah. didn't. I thought, yeah. Rom, yeah. I thought Rom and the Mikes were going to come on and do something cool. But I didn't think it was going to be what it ended up being. Rom broke my brain by expanding on the lore and the idea of what Swamp Thing can be, what it can mm -hmm. mean, what stories can be. Somehow, Rom V added the Suicide Squad almost assuredly on a mandate. Just about to say that, yeah. <laughs> and made that great. Made it phenomenal. Like, made it something that was, that felt like it was the plan all along. Um, just truly a special work by all three creators. It's gotten a lot of praise here already. I'm sure if Marco was here, he would have similar things to say. It's probably his book of the year. Um, hats off to everybody involved with that. And then, you know, Made in Korea. That was also one of my biggest surprises of the year. Didn't think much of it. We read it on a lark, the first issue, and it ended up being so special. I love to see a creator just, come, just step out and say, I'm here. And that's what Jeremy Holt chose to do with Made in Korea. Um, it, it's it's a special series. And I still encourage everybody to go pick up that trade because uh, I don't think you're going to read many books that are that unique uh, this year in comics. So that's it for the Pallies. That's it. That's all we got. Uh, again, special year for 2021 in comics. We got so many great books. I wish we could sit here and talk about all of the honorable mentions and things like that. We don't have that kind of time. So thank you to all the creators who were a part of the books that we discussed here, the ones that were a part of the books that we just don't have the opportunity to discuss right now. On our social media, we will be posting our top fives, our individual top fives uh, for the year. So we'll be able to kind of you know, shout out a few more books that way. Um, please share your thoughts with us on the Pallies. Which books would you have 
shout it out that we didn't. I'm going to post the list of categories in the Discord. So if you want to jump on over to the Discord and, um, you know, take that template and add your books to it, that'd be very, very cool. You can do that on YouTube as well, wherever you listen to the show. Make sure you subscribe, leave us a rating, a review, whatever you think we deserve. Wherever you listen to this podcast, stay tuned this Thursday for our reviews of Inferno and whatever else we decide to do. No image reviews this week. We just didn't, there wasn't a book that really uh, stuck out to us and we can't it's review Spawn week. anymore. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have to review Spawn on the uh, Thursday show. So stay tuned for that. Uh, let's do, yeah, Tyler. Yep. You are, you're, you're a comics oh, pal no. now. I can't dodge yeah. it anymore. Yep. Nope. <laughs> uh, Kale, why don't you start us off with your plugs? You're the, you're the guy now, dude. Oh boy. What yeah. a lot of pressure. I hope I don't fuck it up. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Comics Pals. You can find me at Toto Into on Twitter and Instagram. That's T O T O I N T O W. You can find my work at kaleward.com. That's C A L E W E A R D.com. Um, one thing I would love to talk about is if Spider Man were a horror character, would he be as popular? No. You mean like Man of Spiders, that, that Spider-Verse character that's a whole, like thousands of actual <laughs> sentient spiders in a Spider-Man suit? That's not what I meant, but I hadn't considered that, and okay. I am here for it. Um, and also, I would love some comic book recommendations, preferably current, but they don't have to be, of books that are in a similar vein to Indiana Jones. Hmm. I, I have one. There's an Alex, Alex, uh, I actually have, hold on, hold on, hold on, let's see. I have no clue what he's about to say. He said Alex, and I was like, Alex and Ada? Yeah, I was like, that's not. Bravo for Adventure by Alex Toth. Oh, yeah, Alex Toth, of course. Look at that, good stuff. And it's not traditionally shaped, it's more of a square book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toth is old stuff. It's black and white. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is tasty stuff. If you're a fan of like uh, Samini or uh, Leonardo yeah. Romero, uh, it's got that kind of feel to it. Tom Riley doing the thing. I can't yeah, believe Toth. you just touched that. Toth like you're, is you're... where um, everything came from. Toth is Johnny Quest. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Johnny Quest, uh, Space Ghost. I think he, I think Hercules. he did. Oh, I hope that's true. Yeah. Uh, I think he dabbled in some of the designs in um, Batman the Animated Series, but that might have been uh, mm. past his time. It might have been. Might have been yeah. Hmm. Okay. It's, well, it's never good. mind then. It's, it's I don't nice want to talk about it anymore. Um, I won't take any recommendations, so that the window has closed. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Tyler, plug yourself. Oh, uh, well, uh, That's what his wife says. <laughs> now you know why I'm sitting uncomfortably. Um <laughs> So <laughs> you can follow me at the Tyler Olson on Instagram and Twitter um, where I'm getting lit up on my Twitter for making a reply to Elmo's official Twitter telling him he should get tested for COVID. I don't know why. I saw that. Yeah. I don't know why, but it's what? been all night. Um, yeah. So that's where you could find me. You find right. me there. Um, uh, I am going to be sending out some messages to some people later for a journey into Equestry because that is coming back now that I yes. have settled, okay. settled in. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Can't wait for that. Uh, I am on Twitter and Instagram only, at Sean Soapbox. Hit me up to talk about comics and how great they were in 2021, your hopes for 2022 in comics, and The Matrix Resurrections. I can't get enough of this movie. I've seen it twice. I want to really? see it again. I think it's brilliant. I think it's a masterpiece. Um, and I I really, really don't understand the criticisms. So bring that up in the Discord. Matt's been talking about it in my in my group chat with him. I haven't seen it yet. So oh, does he know half it? in the bag just did a, a review on it? So if, if you guys watch half in the bag, it's it's out, it's it's probably on my 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 to-do list for today. So maybe I'll get back to you on that. Is All it right. uh streaming? HBO Matrix, Matrix, yeah, or HBO whatever Matrix. you have there. Equivalent. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, you can find Marco at Mr. Marco Animoto. And that's all yes. he gets. That's yeah. all he not right now, though. His internet's down. So yeah. Oh. <laughs> you will not find him there. <laughs> He'll be there, but you can't. He won't reply to you. So yeah, exactly. Uh, 
thank you so much for listening to this episode of the comics pals we appreciate you guys so much thank you for continuing to follow us into 2022 can't wait to see what comes next stay tuned we've got a lot of cool things coming with that we are the comics pals signing off take care guys see you guys see you next week